There's a lot of people out there who are claiming the economy is going to make a soft landing and that we're not going to have another financial crisis. And one of the arguments that those people routinely make is that delinquencies, even though they're rising, they're still historically low. And much like the jobs reports and the inflation numbers, this is all based on government data that best case scenario is manipulated. Worst case scenario, it's an outright lie. Take this chart, for example, here that was posted on X a few days ago by Frog Capital. And this chart is showing the rate of delinquencies as a percentage of all the loan balances for the various different loan types. In purple, you've got revolving home equity loans. In yellow, you've got mortgages. In green is auto loans. Blue is credit cards. And in red is student loans. And one thing you might notice in this chart is right away the argument that delinquencies are historically low, well, that just doesn't hold water. We've already seen that the blue delinquencies, which is credit cards, that's already higher than pre-pandemic levels. The green line for auto loans, already higher than pre-pandemic levels. And the purple line for home equity revolving, that's right about the same level that it would have been right before the pandemic. As a matter of fact, the only ones that are still below their pre-pandemic levels at this point are mortgages, which is the last thing people go delinquent on because they don't want to lose their house and you get reported to the credit agencies right away when you go 30 days delinquent. But as you can see in the chart, that one is still rising and it's rising pretty steadily. Something I talked about in this video with Melody Wright just a few days ago, where we're already starting to see rising delinquencies in the mortgage market, notably in FHA loans, which is kind of the new subprime. Now, the one that's still well below pre-pandemic levels is student loans. Put a pin in that one. We'll be back in just a minute to that. But I want to point out right next to me here, you can see all of these delinquencies, they spiked dramatically during the global financial crisis of 08 and 09. But one important thing to notice here is they didn't all spike instantly. It's not like the third quarter of 08 got here and everything went vertical. You'll notice that the delinquencies actually started to rise as early as the first quarter of 2006 for some of these. It was a slow and steady build. For home equity revolving, for mortgages, credit cards, auto loans, they all started to rise years before the GFC actually hit. Notably, auto loans was the first one to start rising along with a slight uptick in student loans. Now you may notice that time period, pre-GFC 2005 to 2007, that looks awfully familiar to where we're at right now all the way over with virtually every category on the rise. And of course, mortgages late to the game, just like mortgages were late to the game in the GFC, but they did rise and that these are all rising rather sharply, but this chart, though alarming, doesn't even begin to do it justice. The actual situation with delinquencies is much, much worse than this chart is showing. So let's talk about the elephant in the room here, that red line student loans. According to this chart, delinquencies in student loans have not budged at all, really since the pandemic started. Sitting there flat, below 2%, right around 1%, What's going on here? Nothing is moving. And as usual, the answer is the government is lying to you. Now, this chart was produced by the New York Fed, and it's based on data from Equifax. But as you're going to see, because of the government manipulating the data, that data from Equifax is worthless when it comes to student loans. And here's why that red line showing no rise in delinquencies for student loans is just straight up horse manure. Check this one out from June 30th of last year. Fact sheet from WhiteHouse.gov, President Biden announces new actions to provide debt relief and support for student loan borrowers. This is right after President Biden's setback in the Supreme Court, where they ruled that student loan forgiveness was unconstitutional. But this isn't about student loan forgiveness and whether we should or shouldn't. This is about the accuracy of the data. And in this document, there are clues about why that data is not accurate at all, why it is a straight up government lie. Scrolling down here, we get to this paragraph. In addition to protect the most vulnerable borrowers from the worst consequences of missed payments following the payment restart, which happened in October of last year, the department is instituting a 12-month on-ramp to repayment running from October 1st of 2023 to September 30th of 2024 so that financially vulnerable borrowers who miss monthly payments during this period are not considered delinquent not reported to credit bureaus, not placed in default, and are not referred to debt collection agencies. So in other words, what this paragraph is telling you is that that red line on the chart that showed student loan delinquencies weren't rising, 
is a fake data point because here is the government telling you that they're not allowed to report people who missed their student loan payments as delinquent, so that data point is fake. But even though that data point on student loan delinquency is fake, we can still estimate what that data is. Check this one out from back in December in payments.com. 40% of borrowers have not resumed payments on student loans. Even though student loan payment moratoriums ended last October, as of December, 40% of people still had not made a single payment. And guys, this article is based on Department of Education data, the same Department of Education that made it illegal to report that data to the credit bureaus. So if they were reporting the data, it would be something closer to 40%. So long story short, that chart from the New York Fed showing delinquency data, it's fake. Like so many other government statistics, it's either manipulated to make certain politicians look better or it's just an outright lie. Now here, using the magic of artificial intelligence, I've imputed the data, adjusted for inflation and the 24 month moving average, and just kidding, this is Microsoft Paint. But I corrected the chart to show what the correct delinquency rate for student loans should be based on the Department of Education's own numbers on how many people are not making their payments. And well, this is what it would look like. Now, set aside for a second the fact that the student loan payment number is obviously much higher than the government is showing, you have to actually factor in that the people not making their payments on student loans, that's artificially suppressing those other lines there. The green line, the blue line, the yellow line, the purple line, they would all be higher if people were still making payments on their student loans because they wouldn't have enough money to make their car payments or to make their home equity payments or their mortgage payments. So besides the fact that the student loan number was just an outright lie, the other numbers are manipulated lower by the fact that people don't have to pay their student loans. So besides the fact that most of the lines on this chart for these other types of debt are already rising at rates equal to or even faster than the time leading up to the global financial crisis, if you factor in the effect of the student loan payments being suspended, well, all those numbers would be even higher. Oh, and one other thing, if you really want to know what this chart really looks like, well, for that, we're going to have to zoom out just a little bit. This is what that chart would look like if the government ever got around to telling you the truth. Till next time, live small and dream big.